today I'm going to be going over some of the differences I noticed uh, of Pokemon and moves between uh, Gen 1, specifically Red and Blue, and Fire and Leaf Green. Now we'll be using this information in a video later, so stay tuned for that, but uh, yeah, let's give it a go. All fully evolved Pokemon besides Ditto get Toxic, Hidden Power, Protect, Double Team, Return and Frustration, Secret Power, Attract, and Rest, and Facade, but that's post-game, so it'll be ignored. Uh, Rock Smash, Waterfall, and Dive are also in the post-game and will be ignored for the sake of this review. Now, most move tutors in the game uh, used to be TMs back in Red and Blue, although it must be pointed out that Body Slam and Sword Stance are now in the post-game and will be counted as removed from the Pokémon's move lists. Uh, Double Edge is at the end of Victory Road, but we can count it. Frenzy Plant, Blast Burn, and Hydro Cannon are on two island and are very out of the way. Um, and they're also only for the Kanto starters, so let's just leave them out. Also, side note, uh, Seismic Toss is a little strange to find, but you'll, you can find it. Now, as for the Pokémon themselves, I'm going to be flashing a screenshot of my notes for them up on the screen. I won't be reading out everything, as I don't think that would help, but I will be going over some important notes over it. Now, one thing that you'll be seeing later with more poison types is that Sludge Bomb by TM is post-game, which really hinders their viability, but it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. Um, Venusaur also gains access to Earthquake, which is really cool. It's, I'm glad that you can have another physical move on it. And for a lot of grass types, you'll notice that Mega Drain is no longer a TM, so most Pokemon don't get it. It's been replaced with Giga Drain, which can be argued if it's better or not. I personally prefer the 10 PP of Mega Drain to Giga Drain's 5 PP, but it does do more damage. But overall, Venusaur has been pretty good as always. Charizard manages to get a buffed up special attack, which is very good for it. In addition to a very expanded move pool with Steel type, actual flying type stab, brick break, just whatever Charizard could want. Blastoise, on the other hand, doesn't really have much going on, it seems. A uh, buff to its special defense, always welcome. Uh, Bite is now a dark type move, which is special in Gen 3, so that makes it better for it. Uh, not really anything else going on. Butterfree, being in a gen that's not Gen 1, actually has Flying Stab and Bug Stab. Even though they're both physical and Butterfree can't really utilize them all that good. Beedrill, on the other hand, while not really getting much in terms of new moves besides like Brick Break and Aerial Ace, gets a massive buff to its special defense, which means it's not going to be taken out by Bubble Beam. Pidgeot doesn't really get anything besides actual usable flying stab, but with as many sand attacks that'll be thrown around at you during a playthrough, you're going to appreciate Keen Eye. Raticate, being a Gen 1 normal type, gets to enjoy a lot of move variety, especially that uh, Shadow Ball that's physical, it's, it really appreciates that. Uh, also a boost to its special defense, pretty nice. Guts and Runaway both are good to have during a playthrough. Firo gets Aerial Ace and Steel Wing. Congratulations. Arbok gets Intimidate and Shed Skin, both really good abilities, especially Intimidate, and a little buff to its special defense, which is good for a poison type. Uh, not really much going on in the move pool department, except for Stockpile, Swallow, Spit Up. Those are always cool to have. Raichu now gets the benefits of Pokemon Yellow, giving Pikachu a decent amount of more moves. Uh, I could have sworn it had Water Pulse, or I could just be thinking of something else. As for Sand Slash, not much going on here. Uh, Iron Tail, Brick Break, Rock Tomb, Aerial Ace, that's all you need. The amount of moves that Nidoqueen gets now is just massively incredible to me. 
Iron Tail, Shadow Ball, Brick Break, Shockwave, Flamethrower. It's it's just so much. You have so much coverage. Even Crunch up in the level up move set and, and Super Power too are definitely awesome to have. For more information on Nido King, refer back to Nido Queen. Really though, he got a uh, Horn Drill, Thrash, Mega Horn, which are cool to have, but. I just didn't feel like writing an entire thesis of moves again right after Nido Queen. You probably noticed me making little notes about stat changes in future generations. Uh, I just find it interesting that Clefable uh, no longer has its original special stat of 85 in its special attack or special defense as of X and Y. Uh, for its moves, on the other hand, uh, Cosmic Power, cool. Meteor Mash, cool. It's a Gen 1 normal type laundry list of TMs you can see there. Sadly, the only one out of the line that gets Magical Leaf is Cleffa, which you start out as Clefairy, so you know, don't get it. Ninetales lost special attack for some reason. Okay. Uh, Flash Fire, on the other hand, pretty good to have. Uh, Will-O-Wisp, extremely useful, and Overheat could definitely put in some work. I don't really have much to say about Wigglytuff besides Rollout and the Gen 1 normal type. A good buff to its special attack though, so it, those new special moves it definitely gets a benefit from. Golbat gets some reliable flying stat, which is a phrase we will have a lot more of. But it also has Poison Fang! Hey, we don't have to rely on Sludge Bomb! Poison Fang, I love it so much. Uh, let's go on Vile Bloom, who uh, also joins Clefable in the Ditching It Special Club. Uh, let's see what. Oh, it needs Sludge Bomb. Uh, well then. Parasect gets its special attack lowered, and Dry Skin makes it more weak to fire. And, well, at least Effects Bar is cool. Uh, Venomoth uh, loses special defense, okay, not a great start here. Silver Wind is cool, even though it goes off of its physical attack. Um, Sludge Bomb. It's okay, Buck type We'll fix this soon. Ductrio comes out with two of the best abilities in the entire game. Try attack and Fissure were both TMs in Gen 1 and are now learned by level up. Didn't really lose a whole lot of moves. Persian gets Limber and Technician, both of which are quite useful. Meowth gets Pickup, by the way, which is extremely important. Uh, as for Persian's moves, Faint Attack and Fake Out, Swagger, pretty good. Uh, the TMs you can see there, Gen 1 Normal Type, of course. Uh, really always a good option. Nothing really special about Golduck, except for a decent boost to its uh, special attack. Primeape, on the other hand, cannot be uh, put to sleep from Vital Spirit, and Anger Point, giving it a massive attack buff is awesome, if it ever happens. Uh, special Defense, minor buff, I mean, that's always good. Its moves, on the other hand, is where it really shines. Low Kick, Karate Chop, Cross Chop. Uh, brick Break, Earthquake, Iron Tail, Aerial Ace, this thing gets everything. Arcanine sees a nice buff to its special attack, two really good abilities in Intimidate and Flash Fire, and just a little bit of help with Extreme Speed and Aerial Ace. Polyrath having Water Absorb is also really good. Its special defense gets a nice buff as well. Uh, new moves in Belly Drum, that's really cool to have. Uh, Amnesia, on the other hand, has been taken away from it. And while in Gen 3 it wouldn't have the same power as it was in Gen 1, it still is kind of sad that the entire concept is gone. Now, the pages for trade evolutions are going to be a little bit confusing, but you can see Special K means for Kadabra, Special A means for Alakazam, and at the very bottom it'll have a little note of which move the pre-evolution does not get. The reason that these are split up but on the same page is in case you can't trade to get the evolution. Uh, as for their actual stats, I mean they both lose a decent amount of special defense, 
thanks to special not being one stat. Their move pulls on their hand don't seem to have changed all that much. Uh, Future Sight and Calm Mind, pretty cool to have. Shockwave and Thief have some nice utility to themselves. Uh, notably, Kadabra does not get Hyper Beam and doesn't get Calm Mind by level up from what I saw. Ultimately though, you can't go wrong with either one of these. Machoke and Machamp get Guts and No Guard, both really good abilities. Uh, both get a minor special defense buff, although Machamp gets a better one. Uh, amazing that they actually have good fighting coverage now, really good to have. Uh, Flamethrower, in case you wanted to hit Fire Blast more often. Uh, Machoke doesn't get Hyper Beam, but that's about it. Victory Bell loses special defense. Almost guaranteed crits from Razor Leaf, Sword Stance, the entire rap mechanic, and missing the chance for Sludge Bomb during the playthrough. All four, Stockpile. Yikes. For two good abilities for Tentacruel, it loses 40 special attack and doesn't really get much else in terms of moves in return. Ah, poison types. There's nothing really going on with Graveler and Golem. Uh, Double Edge is now better since they have Rockhead, so they don't take recoil damage. Uh, Brick Break is cool, Flamethrower is cool. Um, Graveler doesn't get Hyper Beam, Mega Kick, or Roar, but I don't really think that matters anymore. Rapidash gets Runaway and Flash Fire. Already mentioned they are pretty good. Uh, Bounce is pretty funny. Fire Blast is now a level up move as well. That's pretty cool. And Flamethrower by TM. Which, fun fact, Flamethrower wasn't a TM until Gen 3. For some reason. Slowbro isn't really looking all that much different. Uh, special Attack, nice buff. A decent amount of new moves it gets, although I'm not sure anything else besides Flamethrower would help. Notably, Amnesia doesn't work the same as it did in Gen 1, so Slowbro was a great pioneer of that, so no longer has that. Magneton is now Electric and Steel-type, which is the only change so far to any types of the actual Pokémon. Um, a 50 point loss to special defense though is not really helping it that much. Uh, for new moves, Zap Cannon, pretty cool to pair with Lock On if you would like. Uh, Tri Attack used to be a TM in Gen 1 that it did not get, uh, but now it gets it by level up, so that's uh, pretty cool. In my notes, I had wrote a little blurb about what this type change means to Magneton and it has really good resistances in the more important fights, past like Koga and Sabrina. It doesn't really help out all that much, but generally Magneton is still an amazing Pokemon to use. You can tell here I was getting upset with Farfetch'd. I don't like when base stat totals are not just 5s or 10s, and especially with it being a 4 point difference. Also, in X and Y, its physical attack is buffed up to 90 from 65, which would have really helped a lot earlier. Uh, as for its moves, uh, Aerial Ace, pretty cool. Steel Wing and Iron Tail give it some more uh, coverage to help with uh, rock types, even though it wouldn't really help all that much. Uh, lost Body Slam and Sword Stance, that kind of hurts it, especially right now. Dodrio got Pursuit and Aerial Ace and lost Body Slam. The usual, normal flying story. Dugong is really appreciating the buff to its special defense, and its Thick Fat, really amazing ability. Sheer Cold, one of the few Oko moves that can actually hit every single Pokemon as nothing's immune to it. Uh, really awesome to have. Signal Beam, pretty funny. Uh, also, I don't know if it's just it didn't show up correctly, but I think it lost strength in Gen 3, which is the first time I've noticed something losing an HM. I'm not sure if that's right, though. Muck, on the other hand, oh boy, my son, God has blessed you. A great buff to your special defense, and Sludge Bomb by level up. That is immensely powerful. Uh, other than that though, it's just looking great as always. For losing 40 points of special defense, Cloyster gets Shell Armor, pretty good ability, and Skill Link, which isn't really going to help a lot, but it's really nice to have. 
also spikes and uh, rain dance for if it wants to play sort of defensively. Uh, not that that would really be the optimal strategy in a playthrough, but it is what it is. The Gengar Lion gains one of the best abilities for them in the game and Levitate, taking their way their ground weakness. Uh, but they have lost some special defense as a sort of trade-off. Uh, in the move department, Spike, Curse, Destiny Bond, really interesting to play around with. Shadow Ball, Shadow Punch for Stab. A uh, decent amount of TMs they get, but Haunter doesn't get uh, Body Slam, Counter, Takedown, just that entire list. It, it It's really strange how it... It doesn't get thunder in Gen 3 specifically, even though I get it in Gen 1. I don't I don't know. Just give it a read. Onyx gets Dragon Breath for its 30 special attack. Hypno loses a decent amount of special attack, making it kind of seem like it wants to be more supportive with a lot of the new moves it gets, but I don't really know how I like it. Uh also, a little note, Dream Eater by TM in Gen 1 is literally only learned by the Gengar line, the Hypno line, and Mew. Why is this a TM? Kingler has gotten Hyper Cutter and Shell Armor for a little bit of protection, and it also gets Stomp, which is nice, and Dig, in case you want to be a saucy boy. Uh, Electrode, on the other hand, uh, Static is, I mean, it's alright. Rain Dance gives 100% accuracy to Thunder while the rain is up, so I guess that's something. Executor takes one of the largest cuts to one of its stats I've seen in a while. That's an entire 60. Uh, and it doesn't really have much to compensate for it. Uh, confusion isn't really going to be helping when you have Psychic. Uh, Egg Bomb uh, used to be a TM back in Red and Blue, which I don't know why, because it was only Execute, Executor, Chansey, and Mew that got the move, so why, why was it a TM? Marowak gets a nice buff to its special defense, and a few more moves it can play around with. A flamethrower is quite strange. Uh, and of course, the Thick Club uh, boosts its attack. It doubles it straight up. Uh, only 5% chance to be found, though, on Wild Cubone or Marowak, but if, if you're lucky, or you just really want it, it's there. Now, if you want to talk about the biggest winners in the entire region, it'll be these two. Hitmonlee gets Limber and Reckless, which are okay, no paralysis, extra damage on high jump kick. The biggest stat change ever of its immense special defense and just great fighting stab, but uh, let's go to Hitmonchan, one of my favorite Pokemon of all. Uh, Keen Eye and Iron Fist are okay. Keen Eye for Sand Attack, Iron Fist for Punching Moves. The beautiful special defense buff, and so many fighting type moves. Mock Punch is really, really helpful. Brick Break. Look at that. Earthquake. Earthquake. And, and Rock Slide, too. I mean, this Hitmonchan gets everything. And, uh, pro tip, Rock Tomb. Its accuracy lies to you, don't don't even think about it. Lickitung is probably one of the Gen 1 of Gen 1 normal types, getting just all, all, all the moves, all, all of them, just, just whatever you want on it. Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Shockwave, Brick Break, Shadow Ball, everything, anything you want, I mean it. Weezing also rocks up Levitate, although a small little dip in its special defense. Uh, Destiny Bond is really cool to have. Uh, Shadow Ball, Shockwave, Flamethrower, cool to have, but let's just ignore Sludge Bomb. Uh, poison Gas, it's literally the Poison Gas Pokemon. How does it not like? Gen 1, Rhydon gets Earthquake by level up. Just let that sink in. And Mega Horn to freaking Mega Horn, yo. And by TM, I mean you've got Brick Break, you've got Flamethrower, you've got Iron Tail. You, you can do whatever you want with Rhydon and it will work. Well, I see where all the fighting types stole their special from. Chansey lost a whole lot of special attack, making it more of a tank than anything else now. Uh, for level it moves, it gets a Soft Boiled and Egg Bomb. 
TMs, it, it's a Gen 1 normal type, and what did you expect? Uh, you can see at the bottom, a uh, rant about soft boiled and egg bomb. Egg bomb we've already went over with, just execute and chancy and mew. Soft boiled, a TM in Gen 1, literally only chancy and mew get it. What? It, it is the dumbest move to be a T. I. Oh my god, that why? Oh, but the special thievery doesn't end there, as Tangla lost 60 points of special defense. Who, who bullied somebody at Game Freak with Tangela to make it lose so much? Uh, well, at least it gets Mega Drain, one of the few Pokemon in this game to do so. Uh, nothing else really going for it besides losing rep mechanics and sword stance. Hang this combo looks like it really stole everything. Uh, 40 points into its special defense. Early bird is, I mean, it's okay, but Scrappy is a banger of an ability. And as for moves, it gets fake out by level up, which is awesome. It's a Gen 1 normal type, so laundry list of stuff. Even look at that, Dig and Aerial Ace. I mean, there's not much more you'd want. Cedra loses 50 points in its special defense, which I don't think was necessary. Uh, but it learns Dragon Dance, even though I don't think it could spell Dragon and it can't dance. Uh, sea King loses 15 special attack, which doesn't help either. Uh, and learns Mega Horn by level up. Uh, that that's cool. Neither of them really gained that much. I mean, you've got other choices to pick unless you just really like these. I don't know. Stormy doesn't really lose that much. I mean, 15 points of special defense, it, uh, but it gains a Swift and Bubble Beam back. They used to be TMs, and now it gets them by level up. Confuse Ray, also cool. Cosmic Power, awesome. Didn't really lose any important moves, so yeah, Stormy's looking pretty good. Now I know on the surface it doesn't look like Mr. Mime really got a whole lot of things. 20 more special defense, cool. But Magical Leaf is just so good to have against so many ground types you'll be fighting against that you will very, very much appreciate it. Uh, Shadow Ball, Brick Break in case you need to hit something else, Shockwave is pretty cool. Honestly, Mr. Mime, amazing. Scyther is eating pretty good. Uh, good buff to its special defense. It gets reliable flying stab now, which is really good for it since it doesn't have to worry about just using normal type moves. Uh, Fury Cutter is, oh, it could be better, but it's boosted by Technician and Swarm at a certain point. Uh, counter's funny. Uh, it lost Sword Stance, which kinda sucks, but other than that, looking fine. Jinx lost 20 special defense, and it, I mean, it gets some new moves, but I don't think you really need them. Jinx is always gonna be an amazing option regardless. Electabuzz and Magmar are two sides of the same coin, both getting a little bit of buff to their special attack, and both learning moves that they were originally TMs back in Red and Blue. Uh, Electabuzz has Swift and Thunderbolt, and Magmar gets Fire Blast, which is really cool for them. Uh, new TMs, I mean Shockwave for Electabuzz, and both of them get Brick Break, that, that's about all that's going on. Excellent. For not getting any new bug moves, or I guess zero at all except Hidden Power Bug, uh, Pinsir is looking pretty good, a uh, little buff to its special defense. While it did lose the rap mechanics from Gen 1 for Bind, which it now gets from Yellow, it has uh, some more moves. Uh, Brick Break, which is a TM in this game, pretty cool. Submission, which is not as cool, but it was a red and blue TM, so nice to have. Uh, Dig, Earthquake, Rock Slide, Thief, eh, uh, Pinsir's looking alright. While this video isn't about competitive Pokemon, Tauros' reign as king is long over by this point due to losing some special stat, and uh, for playthrough sake, Body Slam, but for competitive sake, Hyper Beam, which it really needed. Uh, playthrough wise though, it's still going to be amazing with two great abilities, especially Intimidate. 
uh, Thrash is cool. Uh, Water Pulse, Flamethrower. Uh, I mean, they're usable, even though you lost special. Gyarados also loses special attack, which doesn't necessarily help it, but I think having Dragon Dance and Earthquake far more makes up for it. Lapras trades in its Gen 1 Horn Drill for the much superior Sheer Cold. Uh, a little nick to its special attack, but that's nothing we can't handle. Uh, Water Absorb and Shell Armor, both good to have. Uh, honestly, Lapras, not much has changed. Ditto. Vaporeon loses a little special defense, which, I mean, it's okay, it's still very, very bulky. Uh, Water Absorb is a great ability for it, that's really nice. Um, Aurora Beam from Yellow, it really appreciates that, in case you didn't want to use Ice Beam. Uh, not much going for it in the TM department this time around, but still, a good choice. In terms of changes, Jolteon's pretty much just the electric Vaporeon. Uh, nothing really new here except Bite, which is now dark and special. It, it likes that. Uh, Volt Absorb, pretty nice, and Special Defense is just a little lower, but eh, it is what it is. Instead of Special Defense, Flareon loses a little Special Attack, which it's, uh, it's fine. Uh, Flash Fire is cool for the very few fire moves you'll be hit with during the playthrough. Uh, Shadow Ball is pretty cool. Porygon's looking pretty good this time around. Trace and Download are both good abilities. A small raise to its special attack is always welcome. Lock on Zep Cannon is devastating. Shadow Ball, Iron Tail, Aerial Ace, good moves to have. Generally though, yeah, it's looking alright. Omastar loses a good amount of special defense because it looked at somewhat a Game Freak funny. Uh, Swift Swim and Shell Armor, though, are pretty nice to have. Uh, bite, it gets now, and it's special, that's cool. And it has Reliable, Rock Stab, and Ancient Power, and Rock Slide. I don't even know if it got any rock moves, maybe Rock Throw back then, I don't, I don't know, but it's eaten pretty good now. Kabutops loses 5 Special Attack, oh, okay. Uh, Swift Swim, Battle Armor, good abilities once again. Theory Cutter is pretty funny. It now gets Mega Drain by Level Up. It used to be a TM back in Red and Blue. Uh, same thing with uh, Omastar, Reliable Rock Stab in Ancient Power and Rock Slide. Awesome to have. Also like Aerial Ace and other physical moves. It's very nice for it. Now if you want to talk about fossil Pokemon, here's the real glow up baby. Aerodactyl. It gets some more special defense. Is nice. Pressure is a good ability. A uh, Rockhead, I mean, I personally don't use it, but it could definitely be useful. Uh, but just look at its moves. Wing Attack is 60 base power now, but you have Aerial Lace as a TM, Ancient Power and Rock Slide, Earthquake, Thief, Dragon Claw, Steel Wing, Strength, Aerodactyl, the only thing it misses is Swift, and if the only thing you miss is Swift, you're off pretty good. Speaking of glow-ups, Snorlax, immunity and thick fat, amazing abilities, a very large buff to its special defense, which it absolutely loves. New moves in Belly Drum, Snore, and Sleep Talk are great to pair with Rest, uh, Focus Punch, Shadow Ball, Brick Break, Flamethrower, amazing. Uh, it kind of lost a couple moves from Gen 1, nothing really major except maybe self-destruct, but also Double Edge uh, from Level Up, it now only gets it from Move Tutor, but I mean, most people aren't going to use Double Edge anyways, Snorlax is doing amazing. Articuno loses some special attack, which I don't think it appreciates, but it gets Sheer Cold and Mind Reader, which are pretty funny, also Reflect by Level Up, uh, used to be a red and blue TM, I don't know why, but its move pool has been expanded decently and it surely appreciates it. Uh, a little blurb down there about its special attack, Articuno had the strongest special attack in the game of Blizzard in Gen 1, uh, it's shared with Moltres's Fire Blast and Zapdos' Thunder, if I'm looking at things correctly, although I don't ever remember it being mentioned in Gen 1 video of Zapdos' Thunder being as strong. I don't know. 
Zapdos was already a good Pokemon, and losing a little bit of special defense isn't going to change any of that. Uh, Rain Dance can now make Thunder 100% accurate, Shockwave doesn't miss, Aerial Lace is cool, although it gets Drill Peck, so whatever. Uh, Moltres, on the other hand, loses 5 more special defense than Zapdos for some reason. Uh, it now gets Wing Attack and Flamethrower, and Heat Wave. Heat Wave's pretty cool. Uh, Flamethrower, back in Gen 1, wasn't a TM, so Fire types just had to naturally learn it, and Moltres did not. Yeah. Uh, Moltres is looking pretty good. In exchange for its Gen 1 rap and Thunder Wave shenanigans, Dragonite gets just a massive amount of damage and coverage, with Outrage and Dragon Claw. Brick Break, Flamethrower, Aerial Ace, Steel Wing, you even get Fly if you want. Dragonite just, it's a wonderful Pokemon and there's no, no doubt why it's so rare. While in Gen 3 you can't have a Mewtwo during your playthrough, he is here for completionist's sake. Now he does lose a lot of special defense due to Gen 1 Psychic type's uh, sin of being really really good. But he has a whole lot of new moves to work with. Future Sight is okay, it's funny. Calm Mind and Bulk Up, so you can go either way with your Shadow Ball and Earthquake, Brick Break, Shockwave, Flamethrower, Aerial Ace, or just Rock Psychic. Uh, it did lose a few moves, but I don't think any of them are going to be any big losses. Mewtwo is, I mean, it's Mewtwo, what do you expect? You can't have Mew in a playthrough, but it does get Ancient Power by level up now, and uh, literally everything in the game. And everything that it doesn't get is a TM not in Gen 3. Okay, now that we're done with the Pokemon, let's take a look and see what changes happen to the moves. Dig used to just be a two-turn earthquake back in Gen 1, and it had its power lowered. Uh, Double Edge got a slight increase in power. Explosion and Self-Destruct got a huge uh, buff into their power, and of course they still have their property of having the defense of the Pokémon they're hitting. Wing Attack used to just be as strong as Peck, but now it's a respectable 60 power. A low Kick used to have 50 power back in Gen 1, now its damage calculation is based on the opponent's weight. Bide went from no accuracy check to 100% accuracy, Blizzard back in Gen 1 used to have 90 accuracy. It is now 70. Rock Throw, Jesus Christ, had 65% accuracy. It is now 90. Whirlwind went from 85 accuracy to 100%. Low Kick went from 90 accuracy to 100. Mimic went from 100 accuracy to no accuracy check. And Razor Wind went from 75 accuracy to 100%. Uh, also, in Gen 1, Moves with 100% accuracy had a 1 in 256 chance to miss, known as the 256 glitch. Uh, this is obviously fixed by now. Uh, also in Gen 1, status moves had a 50% chance to fail if used by the CPU opponent, meaning an easier experience fighting and catching certain Pokémon, like Abra. Acid, Aurora Beam, Bite, Bubble, Bubble Beam, Constrict, and Psychic had their 33.2% chance of having their secondary effect activate down to a 10% chance to activate. And also, Psychic is changed from lowering Special to Special Defense. I guess it would originally be Special Attack and Special Defense together, Special... forget it. Dizzy Punch gains a 20% chance to Confuse, because it didn't have it in Gen 1. Fire Blast's 30% chance to burn was lowered to 10%, while Poison Sting's 20% chance to poison was raised to 30%. Rock Slide gained a 30% chance to flinch the opponent. Sludge's 40% chance to poison is lowered down to Poison Sting's 30% as well. Thunder's 10% chance to paralyze was increased to 30%. I don't know why Fire Blast got hit and Thunder got buffed, but whatever. Uh, Try Attack gained a 20% chance to inflict a status condition, either being Burn, Freeze, or Paralysis. Note that it's not 20% for each of them, leading to a 60% chance to status. It, it's 20% chance for something to happen. Uh, Sky Attack gained a 30% chance to flinch and an increased chance to crit as well. Bite, Gust, 
Karate Chop and Sand Attack had their types changed from Normal to Dark, Flying, Fighting, and Ground type, Roar and Whirlwind went from no priority in Gen 1 to minus 1 priority in Gen 2, and now in Gen 3 we have minus 6, making sure that it probably will go last. Also from Gen 2, Endor went from plus 2 to plus 3 priority. Gen 1, due to being a set amount of damage and not using type effectiveness in damage calculation, Seismic Toss can hit ghost types, and Nightshade can hit normal types. I really think that Nightshade should still hit normal types, but what do I know? Mimic in Gen 1 lets you look at your opponent's moves and choose which one you want to take. Um, this can be any move besides Struggle, including moves the user already knows. It will still use Mimic's PP even if the move copied has a lower max PP. The example on Bulbapedia is 9 out of 5 PP displayed for Horn Drill. But in Gen 3, Mimic can't copy Sketch, Transform, Metronome, or moves already known by the user, and it is the last move that the opponent used which gets copied, and it gives the move 5 PP to use instead of using Mimics. Disable in Gen 1 just disables a random move of the opponent. Uh, however, it now disables the last move used by the opponent. Counter in Gen 1 used to only activate on normal and fighting type attacks, and now it goes against all physical attacks. Amnesia has changed from boosting special in general to just special defense losing its amazing utility from Gen 1. Growth is also changed from boosting special to only special attack. Trapping moves, being Wrap, Bind, Clamp, and Fire Spin, used to stop the opponent from being able to move, use a move in Gen 1, but did allow them to switch out. It has been changed to the opponent not being able to switch out while Wrap is active, but they can still use moves without a problem. Hyper Beam will cause the user to recharge in Gen 3, even if Hyper Beam kills the opponent, which is not the case in Gen 1, and it's kind of sad it lost a whole lot of use because of that. Focus Energy and other ways to change your crit rate actually divided your chance to crit by 4 instead of multiplying it in Gen 1, legitimately making it worse than using Splash in most cases. This, of course, was fixed by Gen 3, now raising the crit chance to 2 stages. Speaking of crit chances, critical hits in Gen 1 are calculated based on the Pokemon's base speed, stat, and level, meaning Pokemon that are faster and higher leveled have a higher chance to crit. Also moves with an increased chance to crit like Slash or Razor Leaf multiply the chances by 8 times, maxing out at 255 out of 256, meaning that moves like Persian's Slash are almost guaranteed to crit. In Gen 3, however, it was changed to all Pokemon having a flat chance to crit of 6.25%. For type changes, we have Magnemite and Magneton going from Pure Steel to Electric and Steel. That's the only Pokemon that changed types. However, type effectiveness is the main key here. In Gen 1, Poison and Bug were super effective against each other. Now, changed to Poison Resisting Bug and Bug receiving neutral damage from poison. Fire used to not resist ice, meaning Charizard and Moltres were actually weak to ice type attacks. Uh, Ghost vs Psychic was kind of programmed wrong in Gen 1 because Psychic was immune to Ghost. It was supposed to be super effective and several NPCs in the game say it's good against Psychics but it just didn't work out. That's fixed to Ghost being super effective. Before we get into the changes of status conditions, let's go over the fact that in Gen 1, an attack was not able to status the opponent if they were the same type as the move. For example, Thunderbolt couldn't paralyze electric types, Poison Steam can't poison a poison type, and Fire Blast can't burn a fire type. A little quirk of this system is that normal types can't be paralyzed by Body Slam, a major development in the competitive scene. This was fixed by Gen 3, where it designates that fire types can't be burned, ice types can't be frozen, and poison types and steel types uh, can't be poisoned. On to status changes. Poison in Gen 1 dealt 1 16th HP after the poison Pokemon moved, or didn't move, it was in wrap, and did not kill its opponent. 
While in Gen 3, it does 1 8th HP at the end of the turn, regardless of killing the opponent or not. Toxic used to start out at 1 16th HP and going up another 1 16th HP each turn it activates at the same time it gets poison. Uh, this damage is kept tracked of by a counter, which is also drawn upon for the damage of Leech Seed, which also increases the counter if Toxic is still active. This counter also applies to burn and or poison, although you must remove the Toxic before burning or poisoning the Pokemon. Uh, this changed to regular poison after switching out in Gen 1. In Gen 3 now, uh, it changed to 1 8th HP at the end of the turn, regardless of killing the opponent or not, and its damage does not affect Leech Seed, Burn, or Poison. Uh, in case they it gets removed. Uh, Pokemon that switches out with Toxic will still be Toxic when it switches back in, though the increased damage counter is reset in Gen 3. Burn dealt 1 16th HP to a burned Pokemon after it would do an action. Uh, in Gen 3, it now deals 1 8th HP at the end of the turn regardless of killing the opponent. Freeze, on the other hand, in Gen 1, it was pretty much game over. The only way to thaw out without an item was to be hit by a fire move, except fire spin, or by haze, which is very rare. Uh, you could not attack the turn you were thawed out either. Uh, by Gen 3, it is now possible to thaw out on your own at a 20% chance each turn, and you can attack on that turn as well. Paralysis doesn't seem to have any noticeable changes except for not being affected by Gen 1 jank. Uh, sleep, on the other hand, used to last 1 to 7 turns in Gen 1, and the Pokémon does not attack on the turn it would wake up. Uh, sleep induced by rest only lasts 2 turns, though. In Gen 3, sleep lasts 1 to 5 turns, and the Pokémon can attack on the turn it wakes up. Now, Snore and Sleep Talk do increment the sleep counter while you are in, although due to an oversight, if you switch out, it would reset the counter to before you would use those moves. Uh, confusion, though, doesn't seem to have any ma major changes. It seems the same. Last, but absolutely not least, is Leech Seed, which is in the status condition section, because... Mm, Anyways, it does 1 16th HP upon the affected Pokémon after it moves in Gen 1, and this damage is also affected by an increments Toxic's counter. Go watch Toxic again if you need a refresher. In Gen 3, however, it does 1 8th HP at the end of the turn, and it is not affected by Toxic in any way, it seems. Alright, that's about everything I wanted to go over today. Uh, this took a lot longer than I expected to make, and the video is a lot longer, too, as well. Uh, in some closing notes, I just want to recommend uh, Big Yellow. He does an amazing job on Pokemon videos for information on older gens and competitive battling. Plague Von Karma, she does a series called RBY Bites, where she goes over certain competitive changes in history of Gen 1 Pokemon, I really suggest it. Uh, if you're interested in the Pokemon TCG game for Game Boy Color and other stuff like that, Paraspector is who you're wanting to go watch. He recently did some videos going over a vending machine series of cards that were not that were or were not introduced into Pokemon Game Boy Color games. And finally, if you're interested in Pokemon challenges and how you can use some of these changes, go watch my dry bread. He does Pokemon challenge videos usually every week, and they are always interesting to watch. Uh, other than that, yeah, I really thank every one of you for watching if you've made it this far, or even if you use any of this information. Uh, hopefully the video that will go with this video, that goes over red and blue and fire red and leaf green, will be out sometime. I don't know how long it's going to take, but regardless, thank you for watching, and that's going to be it for me today. Thank you.